let's spend, let's spend some time talking about cloud communications and more specifically how to make sure that we have a successful transition to a cloud communication solution. It's easy to say, hey, I'm going to go cloud, but it's often hard to get there successfully with everyone in your organization happy. We're going to spend some time talking about how to do that today. A couple of housekeeping tips. I will point out that if you do want to leave a question in the lower left hand corner of your screen, you should see a little chat icon. Um, you can click on there and enter the questions and we'll make sure and get to all of them at the uh, end of the call. Add a question anytime. We'll get back to it at the end. So if you think of something, just go ahead and put it in there and uh, we'll follow up with you later on. Uh, also, if you would like a copy of this presentation, you can email us at vmarketing at vertical.com and we'll get you a copy uh, of all the slides that you're going to see here today because there's a lot of content here. So let's get started with that content. Here's what we're going to talk about a little bit. We're going to spend a minute talking about who Vertical is and why you should bother to listen to us about any of this in the first place. And then we'll take you through several different steps that we've seen will really make sure that your cloud transition is successful. We'll have you verify whether or not cloud is the right direction for you to go. Then figure out what product that you should choose and what you should uh, use. We'll talk about getting the right installation because that's absolutely critical to the success. We'll talk about your network and how to make sure that that network is ready for cloud. And then we'll talk about the idea that when you talk about something like unified communications as a service, you need to remember the as a service portion of it and what that means and what the value is. And finally, we'll, we'll talk a couple tips about phones and what we see out there in the marketplace. And we'll finish up with your questions. One key point that I'll mention, except for this very first section where I'm going to explain to you a little bit about vertical, we're not here to sell today. We're here to educate you. You're not going to hear me mention a product other than on exactly one slide. You're not going to hear me recommend a specific product. If you're interested in knowing what you should choose and getting some advice, we'll give you some suggestions on where you can find that information. But this is all educational today. We are going to spend a minute talking about vertical because you need to know why you should listen to us, what our value is, and what we bring to the table. So one of the things to understand is vertical is a really comprehensive communications provider. We provide premise-based phone systems, cloud phone service. We sell phones on the desk. We sell voice applications uh, ranging from advanced IVRs uh, to meeting systems. We sell the data and voice networks that this all rides over, and we provide the professional services to develop custom solutions for our customers. And all of this is backed up by the vertical support team, and we've been doing this for decades. So we really have a comprehensive view of the marketplace. We're not stuck in one specific small segment. And that's part of the value that we bring here as we have this discussion today. Another piece of this that's important is that we work with a lot of different vendors. Here's the only place I'm going to mention any vendors at all. I'm not going to tell you a preference. We work with all of them. They're very successful for us. We try and pick what we think are the best in the marketplace and then fit the right one to our customers. But once again, we're not talking about just cloud or just a specific product. We cover a whole array of products and services. And that gives us a better view when we talk to you about how you can best implement cloud because we see all sides of the issue. Just to give you an idea of some of the customers that we work with, uh, we have uh, tens of thousands of customers all across the United States uh, in virtually every vertical market that you can think of. And here's just a segment of our organization. I'd like to focus on what our operations and support team looks like. Here are the people that actually make cloud transitions successful. Uh, we have a very robust organization. They're distributed all across the United States. And this group is the one that gives us the information that I'm going to be sharing with you today. And all of this results in, I think, what the real value in listening to us is. We have been repeatedly rewarded for the great customer service and support that we provided to our customers. Just most recently, um, for uh, last year, we were, uh, were awarded EMG's PBX Customer Satisfaction Award for being number one in customer support and reliability in contact center. We know how to deliver great support. We know how to make that cloud communications transition smooth. And this is the proof. So understanding all that, let's get into really understanding how we can make sure 
then our cloud uh, transition is smooth. And the very first thing you've got to make sure of is cloud the right fit. It is the correct product. Cloud is not the answer to everything. There are places and customers that it doesn't make sense. And we really divide them up by their priorities. Cloud customers have different priorities from premise customers. So we'll spend a minute looking into what cloud priorities are and you make sure that you match up on this list, that this list fits to what your company's priorities are. And if that's the case, if one or two of these fit, then you're probably the right cloud customer. Now, no, you don't have to have all seven of these to make sure that you're a cloud customer. But if these are your priorities, then you know that this is where you're operating. This is what you should be doing is moving to cloud. And the very first one of them is an OPEX versus a CAPEX financial decision. Cloud is an operational expenditure. It's generally paid monthly. Uh, it's an operating expense rather than a big capital investment like a premise-based phone system. So there may be real advantages from an accounting perspective for your company to keep this off of your uh, balance sheet and just keep it as an operational expense. That's the very first thing to look at and one reason why many people go cloud. But there are some other key priorities. First is technology transformation. If you're a company that needs to be on the leading edge, you want to stay engaged with your customers in all the ways that they're operating, and you want to stay close to them. Cloud is very, very good at this because of the fact that you're receiving the solution from a cloud-based data center. That means that you're always getting the latest version. You're getting updates pushed out to you. Features can be released monthly or quarterly, and they're generally, if they're done right, installed with zero downtime. So it's not a hassle. It's not a headache. There's no effort or cost on your part. You're just always on the leading edge of communications technology. And if communications are really important to you, if you're constantly back and forth in a discussion with your customer, if that's what your business is like, then this can be a very important priority. You want to have the technology transformation going on all the time because you don't want to wait a couple of years uh, or maybe even five or six before uh, those features are included in a premise-based system. Another major one is flexibility and scalability. If your company is expecting a lot of growth, if your company has a lot of transformation going on within the organization, people are moving into different roles, uh, you're embracing uh, new locations, expanding, or even downsizing, all of these things become much easier with the cloud. You're not buying into uh, an upfront cost for sizing. Um, it's very, very easy uh, with cloud to be able to ch make changes both to the number of users that you've got, as well as adding or moving features, providing new capabilities, all of that's very simple. So if your organization is dynamic, if it's in flux uh, at this time, or always, then definitely cloud is the right place to be. If you're looking at reallocating IT resources, you may be a company with few to little IT resources, or you've got to reduce your IT spend. Uh, more commonly, you've got other big projects that you want your IT team to work on. You have meaningful changes in how you are operating and you want your IT team to focus on those. Cloud can really eliminate a lot of the effort. There's no maintenance uh, of the on-site system. There's no monitoring. There's no software patching. There's no checking uh, the equipment. Uh, you don't have to have DR solutions that require even more effort. Uh, all of that is taken care of by the cloud vendor as part of that as a service label that we're going to talk a little bit more. Uh, usually, from the uh, good vendors, moves, ads, and changes are included as well. So you can really offload a lot of the daily operational concern and expense uh, of your cloud communication solution to your vendor and have your IT team focus on productive projects rather than low-value, high-effort tasks. If you're looking into engaging in remote work and expanding remote work, either you've already embraced it as an organization Vertical's a big believer in remote work. Uh, over 80% of our workforce is in remote at this point. And if you're in that scenario, then it is very, very worthwhile to look into cloud because it's a much more effective solution. Here's just some of the benefits you can see from embracing remote working as a technology. This is something that we can spend a lot more time. We'll probably do a future webinar on the topic of remote work. But certainly, if you have more questions or discussions about how this can benefit your company, feel free to reach out to us at vmarketing at vertical.com, and we can schedule a session to talk about that one-on-one. -on -one. But the reason why remote work as a priority leans you towards cloud is very specifically, in the cloud world, every user is a remote worker already. 
you're, none of you are sitting in the cloud provider's data center. Nobody's there. And so the cloud providers are thinking about and focusing on remote every single day. That's what they have to deliver for every single user of every single customer. It's their world so that there's more focus. And that means less time for you to have to think about it. So if just a couple of those priorities resonate, then you're probably on the right path for cloud. But you want to make sure and make that decision and make sure, hey, look, I've already chosen cloud, but let's evaluate what my priorities are. There may be other specific reasons, but those are some of the most common ones. So the next step that you have to get into is, how do I choose the right product? There's so many out there. There's a lot of different options. What's the right way to go about it? Well, we focus on three specific keys to getting the right cloud product. And the very first one of those is focusing on your own needs. You need to determine what specific requirements are driving you to cloud. Look at some of the priorities we just talked about uh, and really write down and identify, here's the things that we have to have, here's what, important, what is important to us. And then ignore all the manufacturer hype. Manufacturers and vendors are really, really big on selling you, here's what we think is cool. What you want is somebody who's gonna stop, listen, ask a lot of questions, find out what your needs are, rather than spending a lot of time telling you how great they are. A second key to getting the right cloud product is understanding the difference between value and price. You know, that classic decision where you're not looking at who's offering you the lowest price. Because right now, let me be completely honest, many, many cloud vendors out there uh, feel like they're trying to get a hold of the marketplace and they really are putting out incredible discounts in some cases to try and seize the market and own as much of it as possible. So you're gonna see some great prices, but the reality is also that not all cloud vendors are created uh, equal. There are some really major differences. We're gonna give you some questions, just a moment to help you find those differences. But just because one product is cheaper does not mean it's the best value and does not mean that it's going to meet your needs. So don't be overwhelmed by low pricing and by the concept of, oh, wow, look at what a great deal. Focus on what your requirements are first and understand the differences between different vendors. You really need to dig for what the value was offered in each product. Don't just look for which one's got the cheapest price tag. And a real key portion of that is to understand that this is a long-term investment. You're probably going to sign a three-year deal um, it's going to be around for a while, but it's going to be even longer than that, most likely. If you bought the right product, then you'll just renew at the end of that three years, and you'll keep going. And theoretically, if, the right, if you've bought the right product, it's going to be your communication solution for the foreseeable future of your company. So you need to think long-term about what you're investing in. You need to think about what the total cost of ownership is, but you don't need to just look at, hey, here's the dollars, and here's how much it's going to cost me over 36 months. You need to think about the life cycle of your company. And what I mean by that is, what is the future? If you're looking at a lot of growth, if you're opening up new locations, if you're moving into remote work, all those priorities, then you need to think about who's going to deliver those best. If your company is going to have strategic priorities, you need to be thinking about what those priorities are and how a communication solution can meet those needs. You need to really think long-term about what this is gonna look like not just three years, but six years and nine years down the road. So that you're picking the right solution and you don't have to end up going through the cost, uh, as I've seen several customers right now that we are working with, of having to say, we got a cloud solution. It wasn't the right thing. It wasn't a happy experience. We need to move to something else. And you certainly don't want to do that every three years if you can avoid it. So think long term. So if you focus on your own needs, understand value over price, and think long term, you're well on your way to picking the right product to begin with. But I mentioned that I'd give you a lot of questions that will help you differentiate. And I've broken them down to three major categories and a few other questions. Those big categories are the reliability of the service. This is critical because if you're going to trust somebody else to maintain a major portion of your infrastructure, they need to do a good job of it. You need to make sure that all the applications they're providing you, it's not just about voice, it's about meeting services like the one we're talking about, talking on right now. It's about chat, collaboration, e-fax. Uh, there can be a whole host of different services. You may have IVR or workflow pieces. You may have SMS integration, uh, your contact center, all these other pieces. 
are they all redundant throughout the data center? When somebody tells you, oh, yes, it's reliable, we've got redundancy in our data center, dig in and find out what that means. Make them show you a chart. Ask them really uncomfortable questions. How many data centers do they have? Where are they located? What happens when they actually fail over and how long does that really take? Make them take you through the process of what they do. And do all of those applications fail over? Or do you end up with, hey, look, you can still make phone calls, but yeah, you're not going to be able to chat back and forth, or your SMS is going to go bad, or whatever it is. And then ask who's actually doing work on this, who's monitoring the service, what data and what steps do they take if there's a problem, are they proactive, are they 24-7, uh, what's the process? Really, really ask the questions here, because it's going to matter a lot when something goes wrong. And believe me, something will go wrong over the lifespan of the product. There will be problems. The a network will have issues. And it will even have smaller blips, little problems. And that's where you want to ask questions about call quality. How does this vendor guarantee call, call quality? On a call-by-call -call basis, what are they doing? What's the technology they use? How do they get reports on all of this? What do they do in response to those reports? Can I get access to that information? And even uh, do I have access to a service level agreement that you can sign that will guarantee me that you're going to provide this? All of those are important questions to ask and really dig in and know that call quality is something that can be very variable between various cloud vendors. How good or bad you sound depends very much on the network around you and also on the technology that the vendor is deploying and how they can res or, you know, respond to issues. Next, ask about, ask about major feature upgrades. How do they roll out new versions? What are examples? Or are they rolled out seamlessly where you're not even going to notice them happening? Or are they going to have, hey, there's a service window between 2 and 4 a.m. on Saturday mornings? What are planned outages like? How often do you have them? What was the last planned outage that you had? Tell me about it and how long was it? Make sure that you understand what the upgrade process is because you're doing two things here, right? This goes back to the reliability pitch. This goes to the idea that software upgrades themselves can cause outages, but it also is the question of how often are they doing these? Because one of those priorities we talked about a little while ago was technology transformation. If you're going to think long-term and invest in this, you want a vendor who is really investing in their technology, who is continuously improving and upgrading the solution. You don't want somebody who last made a change last year. They need to be continuously iterating and improving the product. And then the last part about this is, do they own the own product? Do they own all of the technologies in there? Or do they partner? Is there a contact center piece from a third party? What about their video conferencing? What about their IVR platform? Do they own all of that? And if they don't, how is that going to impact your service and support? If you have a problem, do you still call them? Do they then call the other vendor? Do they handle it in-house? Understand what those third parties are going to mean to your experience, because that can always make things more difficult. And then a couple of other questions that sort of stand on their own. Can I just try it out for a couple of weeks? Can you give me a user account that I can log on to and make some calls, receive some calls, try out chat back and forth? You know, kick the tires on this. Make sure that it fits and feels good. Ask how they deal with carrier outages. So what happens when the data or voice networks that they use and depend upon to provide you service go out? How do they deal with it? Are they proactive? Can they get around it? Make them really give you a good answer here and, and try and avoid the, oh, yes, that's fine, no problem. Dig in because that means that you'll really understand what's happening and get a true answer. Everybody has problems, so ask them what the last big failure on their platform is. Ask them about how it was fixed, how quickly it was fixed, how long it was down, and ask them maybe about the one before that so you can get a concept of how often it happens. If they just tell you, oh, we don't have problems like that, that's just not true. Everybody has issues. Problems always occur. You want to get a real answer here. And then find out how long they've been delivering cloud communications. It's a relatively new space. But there are vendors out there who've been in the, doing this now for 10 and 15 years, and they have a lot more experience than the ones that just showed up last year. And then once again, see how honest they can be with you. Ask them what the biggest weakness of the product is. Every product has weaknesses. Everything has things they can't do as well. Find out what theirs is and find out how willing they are to tell you and talk to you about it. It will determine how well the relationship's going to go in the future. 
And if all of that seems overwhelming, you're like, man, Kevin, I don't know that I can do all of this. That's a lot of questions. Uh, and even if I did ask, I don't know how to evaluate the answers. You can certainly get somebody from vertical to help you out. We're happy to provide you a cloud expert who can go through all these questions, recommend the best solutions, help you out with that. Uh, another methodology is we can provide what an independent consultant who's nationally certified, will provide an independent opinion, can help you with the procurement process and make sure that you're getting the best solution. We have a great relationship with over 100 consultants across the nation. We we'll certainly recommend one to you that will do a great job for you. We also have a channel of local telecom partners that we work with. So if you really want somebody who's local to your area, who has knowledge of what's going on in your town or region, uh, we can recommend companies that have been working with us for decades. So the next piece of this is making sure you get the right installation. And this is really, really one of the critical parts because installation can make or break the success of a cloud communications installation. There's a standard problem in this space. It's what I call the cloud app fallacy. We're all used to nowadays involving cloud uh, applications. You know, let's take Netflix as a big positive example, right? There's something that a lot of people are signed up for. So you decide, hey, yeah, Netflix sounds, Netflix sounds great. I want to look at all these new shows they're doing. So you go to their web page. It's easy to sign up. You put in some information. You do a free trial. Uh, and then you start paying with your credit card. You just start using it. You log on the web page. Oh, there's the list. I click that. And I'm ready to go. Maybe you download the app. And maybe that's as you know, complicated as you go when you get that on your phone. But pretty much you do it and you're ready to go. And there's this tendency to think that's the way all cloud solutions can be. That why it should just be downloaded and go. And there's a lot of vendors out there who push this mentality because they see it, A, as a differentiator for them. Why, we're so easy, you don't need any effort. But B, it also means they have to spend less money on providing installation customer service and support services. And these things are very real, you need them. Because there's no way this Netflix model is gonna work in a UC Cloud implementation. That's not what it's like. This is a business application. And so let's look at how business applications actually work rather than thinking, I'm just gonna download this and on my phone and it's gonna be up and running in three seconds. The reality is that this is more of a business application, just like say Salesforce. And people sometimes think, hey, look, I get Salesforce, I sign up, I start using it immediately. Salesforce even encourages that mentality to an extent. It's all about the ease of use, but it's not how Salesforce actually works. It's not how the business applications. Anytime you buy Salesforce in your organization that's more than like five or six people, this is what a Salesforce implementation looks like. There's going to be a project plan. There's going to be discovery and design. You're going to go through and build. You're going to validate. There's probably going to be some testing. You're going to have a rollout. You're going to have training. And all of this means that somebody has to do all of this. You have to have somebody you're engaged with and involved with. And you have to have this whole process going on. So think this. Don't have that cloud app fallacy that, oh, yeah, hey, I'll just you know sign up, download it, and I'm going tomorrow because that way leads you to a bad experience. This is a successful business rollout where it's going to match all of the needs of how your organization works. The call flows are gonna be there. Your training is gonna be there for your people. They're gonna understand the new features and capabilities and how to operate. When there's trouble, and there will be some trouble, you'll have someone there to help you with all of this. This is how you need to be looking at cloud. The, if you take nothing else away from this presentation today is remember, it's this not the Netflix experience. So some things to look for to make your installation experience good. You look for vendors who have a detailed process. Ask them to show you that process. What's the document look like? What's the steps? How often do you revise this? How long have you been using it? Ask lots of, uh, you know, and make sure that they're asking lots of questions of you and asking you for your input. If they're just coming in and saying, hey, we've got a cookie cutter process that works the same way for every customer, that's probably a warning sign because what you want them to do is be engaged with how your organization works and understand the unique needs of your business. You want to look also for the quality of the installation techs and the personnel you're working for. You want to look for years of experience. You want to look for certificates. You don't want to be in a situation where they're giving you somebody who just started in the call center last week and has a script and that's who's doing your initial setup. You should look for somebody who's got a 
advocate throughout the process for you. Somebody who is on your side from the beginning to the end of the sales process through implementation and on over to the cutover, who's always going to be there to not only answer your questions, but also to go out and advocate for you within their own organization to say, hey, no, we got this wrong. We need to fix this. You want to look for a vendor that's going to provide you on-site options. If you want to have on-site training, which as you get the organization to be later is a great idea. I'm a big advocate of training and education like I'm doing right now on the web. But there's nothing better than an on-site classroom-based environment, especially when you're dealing with something physical like phones, where you can really be there to touch the phones and work with people. And you also want to you know, make sure and see what other kind of options they have. The options for troubleshooting or maybe even design. What kind of options are out there for allowing them to provide you with on-site capabilities? Now, you may not need these or want these. Maybe your organization is small. But it's important to see that you have an organization you're dealing with that can offer those because they understand the importance of the installation process. And then look for the follow-on resources they have. What kind of various capabilities do they have a knowledge base? Do they have videos so that when you have to onboard a new person six months from now, you have resources to do it and you don't just throw a phone at them and say, I don't know. Can they offer follow-on training classes? Uh, can they give you access to support when you need to change the system uh, a year down the line? What are they going to really offer you? And we'll talk more about this in the as a service section of this discussion. Most importantly, honesty. Remember some of those tough questions that we were asking a moment ago when choosing cloud products? You really need to make sure that you have somebody who is as honest with you as possible, that's willing to say, yeah, no, that's a problem. Here's how we're going to fix it. Not somebody who's going to tell you that everything's great and there are no issues because there's always going to be issues in any technology transformation. I've been doing this for 25 years, and I tell you that there's always issues. Then ask, what's going to happen the day after the install? Okay, we cut, we got the phones working, we did training. What's the day two? What's going to happen? Do you have a process for that? Where am I going to call? How am I going to get help? And what's going to happen? Because there, once again, will be issues. So you need to know how that works. And if they don't have good answers for this, I would probably run away. Also make sure that they have project management. And I think this is so important. I'm going to spend a little more time on this. Project management, project management, project management. 70% of organizations have suffered at least one failed major project in their organization in the last year. Hopefully, it's the one you've just been working on. But projects fail with astonishing regularity, and you can't let your cloud transition be one of them. This is such a key portion of your organization. You need to make sure this is a success. And I can tell you that there's a superhero that's going to make it happen to you. It is the dedicated project manager. They are the ones who make or break successful projects. Make sure that whoever you're working with has a dedicated PM whose only job is to be a project manager and who's going to work with you. Find out what kind of certifications they have. Look for things like PMI, uh, which is the Project Management Institute. Uh, see if they've been certified or doing training. Are they getting what's called a PMP certification? Are they PMP certified? Um, look for those kind of things. Ask for a, a copy of their standard project plan. Ask to meet your PM before the sale. Have a phone call with them. Talk to the person who would be assigned to you so you can get an idea of what their methodology is and see how they work. Spending a lot of time on the project management piece of this is nothing but beneficial because they're going to make or break your whole solution. They are the hero of the whole thing. They're going to make sure everything happens on time, that problems are solved quickly, that resources are allocated. When you come up with an unexpected change, they're the ones that are going to move mountains to make sure that happens. The project managers are really going to make this successful or not. So the other thing that you need to look at is whether or not your network is up to the task. Remember, every phone call, every chat, every collaboration, every meeting is going to go over your internet connection. So is your network up to it? And one of the key things to understand is this isn't like browsing a web page or even, let's talk about Netflix since we were just talking about signing up, watching a Netflix movie. Those things aren't real time. When you watch Netflix, they're loading stuff ahead of time onto your computer. It's called buffering. You may have seen messages about that before. So if there's a delay, if something happens, they've already got content on your computer and they can smooth it out. Unfortunately, that doesn't work in real time phone calls very well. You can have a very small buffer, but if it's a second or two, people are going to notice that there's a problem. 
So networks have to be astonishingly good to support voice and even more video. These are real-time communications, and they don't accept shortcomings in the network. And one of the things I'll go ahead and tell you, remember I showed you all the value of vertical, all the things we've done are years and years of experience. This is where it really comes in. We have determined that the network is the absolute number one failure for any cloud communications deployment. A unified communications as a service solution is going to fail if your network is not good. The network is the critical point for success or failure. And this is why installation is so important because part of that installation process needs to be making sure you have an adequate network, fixing it, and making sure it all works. And the first step, the most important part of that is conducting a network assessment. You have to conduct a network assessment. You have to have somebody who knows what they're doing with software that does this specifically come in and check to make sure that what you've got doesn't have problems because there can be lots of problems. Here's an example of some of them. The one everyone always thinks about is, is my internet connection big enough? Does it have enough bandwidth? But that's only part of the problem. There can also be what's called latency and jitter. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about this. You don't need to know the technical details, but you should know that the vendor you're working with is checking and telling you, oh, yes, you've got a very good uh, latency score. You don't have a lot of jitter. Uh, you're in really good shape. Um, if they're not telling you these things and showing you reports on this, then they're probably not doing the job. You need to make sure that this is part of the process. Some of the other problems that can be found is maybe your router, your firewall, the thing that sits at the edge of your company's network and protects you from the rest of the world, maybe that's not configured correctly for voice over IP. Maybe it's not set up to do it the right way. You want a vendor who has lots of experience with many different devices and has already figured out what the right settings are and has the experts to fix those. And then maybe you have internal network problems. Maybe your network just isn't set up. I will devolve into a classic story as, as so many people in our industry love to do, but uh, many years ago we had a customer who kept on telling us that there was a problem in their one office where they were having really bad voice quality. And we had gone in and we'd done an assessment and everything was right. What they hadn't told us is they replaced their network switches. And the new network switches they had from Dell basically turned off all the cool features that we had turned on to make sure that voice was prioritized and was the most important thing on the network that guaranteed call quality. It took quite a while for us to find this, but finally we had to send them the manual to the new devices they'd bought and said, hey, look here, this is what caused it. And we got them solved and fixed. But the point is, even your own internal network, even the switches that you just plug your phones and computers into could be part of the problem. And finally, a lack of failover. This is gonna be your critical communications methodology. Don't you really want some way to make sure that you still have that communication, even in the worst of circumstances? Having internet failover is something that can be done very easily nowadays, and there's a lot of different methodologies to do it. You need to make sure that it's included in your plan and that the vendor you're working with is suggesting some things. So solutions here, if you don't have enough uh, bandwidth, don't just assume that. Make sure that you've got a network ass assessment report, something that's showing you why you don't have enough bandwidth. And if that's the case, work with a vendor who can help you upgrade the network. Ideally, work with somebody who also will sell you the network so that they own both the cloud communication solution as well as the network is traveling over. They're one person that you have to call when you have the problems. On latency and jitter, it's all about having the right network set up the right way. The network assessment will help you determine if there's any problems and help you fix it. The right vendor will help you have that solution. The vendor has the expert vend uh, network techs, the people who really know what's going on. They're, they're going to be able to help you with those router and firewall issues. And your IT team can work together with your vendor to make sure there are no network problems, there are no, are no issues, there's not outdated hardware or hardware with misconfigured with bad settings. Uh, or you have uh, just bad network setups to begin with. And finally, I told you there's some real great options nowadays for internet failover. The key term to remember, and we don't have time to get into all of this, but I can tell you absolutely that one of the Vertical Presents webinars coming up is all about this topic. There's a great new technology called SD-WAN out there, and that stands for Software Defined Wide Area Network. Yes, your eyes have already glazed over. But we'll spend some time talking about that in a future webinar, because SD-WAN can give you a much more robust, and survivable network at very low cost, a great combination, and something you should definitely be thinking of here. So let's talk about the other part about this cloud communications piece. 
Because when we talk about things like, say, unified communication as a service, what does as a service mean? There's a tendency sometimes to think about the idea of something like unified communications as a service as just being, oh, they put the phone system in the cloud, right? They just, they took all the same features and I'm buying it. It's a financial thing. Remember, it's an OPEX versus a CAPEX. And that's really only the difference. Instead of buying it all up front and buying all that stuff and hosting it and having to have the infrastructure, I'm going to pay for it on a monthly basis. But that's not really what this means. And if that's all you're getting, you're really missing out. Because as a service should mean that it's also about the service you get. You should get monthly ongoing service that is of value and helps to make justify that monthly payment you're making. It is not about, hey, I'm renting essentially a virtualized piece of equipment in the cloud. Now, it's possible for someone to just sell you that. And if they do, they should be selling it to you at a very low price. That's where you're looking at those a lot of those low price vendors. But you're not getting the best value because now you're not getting any of these other items that we're going to talk about here. The best vendors out there are going to provide you a whole host of capabilities that are that as a service piece of this. And this is one of those things to really look for. You want to look for support. Is there a live support team that you can call, that you can escalate, that you can talk to a live person? Is there somebody who's managing your system, not just during the install and deployment, but over time who's responsible for it and what's happening with it? They'll do moves, ads, and changes when you have new personnel or people move around or you just need to reset a password. They'll provide on-site support if it's necessary. It's actually pretty rare with a cloud solution, but when you need it, boy, you really need it. It's something that you've got to have, so you're looking for that. There's somebody who will provide that network support for your last mile internet connection. That's, that's where that value of buying it from the same vendor is. Um, you've got somebody who can just answer questions. Hey, can the system do this? Do I have the capability to do that? Um, what, we're going to start doing remote working. Can you talk to me about that? Somebody who can be there to give you all of that information. All of this is something that you get as part of that as a service package. If you've got a good vendor, you're going to get a huge amount of value out of this section. You've just got to make sure that that's what you're getting and not just being left to your own devices or essentially renting phone service. Beyond that, there's a network operations piece. We touched on this briefly earlier. There needs to be somebody who's monitoring the service 24-7, live people, distributed operations centers around the world who are looking at what's going on making sure that they're looking at the state of the network, the servers, the whole solution as a whole, but also the call quality data to make sure, hey, look, there's a lot of people in Nashville, Tennessee who are having bad call quality. Let's dig in, find out, and see if we can proactively fix that before a customer even calls us. This is what's going to make sure that you have a good solution or not, is having that back-end network operations team. And dig in on this one, when we, as we talked about in our questions, you want to make sure what that's like. Because, you know, the worst example of this I've, I've seen, to be honest, is up in Alaska, where uh, many years ago I was installing a system and we needed to talk to the network operations center for a vendor. And it turned out to be a guy in his easy chair that, you know, the people we were calling knew. And he was just at home and, you know, told us he'd call us back right after the television show he was watching was over. I'm not kidding. So you need to know what the real network operations center is like and what's going on there and what kind of capabilities they have. That's part of what you're paying for. You want to make sure you're getting that value. And even more important can be the security team. If you haven't figured out, we're in an age of constant security threat. We had a customer call us yesterday who wanted help. They weren't our customer. They were somebody else's. But their system all of a sudden had been kind of begun sending calls to the Middle East nonstop, and they didn't know what to do. And their vendor was not able to help them. They had no idea, and their entire system had gotten compromised. That's because they had a system that did not have anybody doing security analysis. There wasn't a team that was proactively looking for threats. There was monitoring mass calling behaviors to look like, well, wait a second, why is this little guy who's never called... Uh, you know, Syria before, pumping out, you know, 10,000 calls a day to Syria. There's something going on here. That's generally toll fraud that somebody's stopping. Are they sending out international calls? Are they misusing your resources? Uh, is the, you know, making sure that nobody's hacking into the system, looking for the latest security threats, updating the software based upon that, and maintaining the certifications involved that may be important. If you're looking for things like FISMA certification or PCI or HIPAA, it's great to say, oh, yes, we have it, 
But does that mean that they've maintained it and kept current and are really doing the job two years, three years down the road? Remember, it's that long-term thinking coming in again. You've got to think about this long-term. And long-term, you don't just want, do you have the certification today? But is the certification going to be here a couple of years down the road? And then the development team. Remember, transformation is one of those things you're getting with this solution. So you should be looking for constant updates, faster security fixes coming out when new problems are announced, new modalities of communication. That's a big word. What the heck are you talking about there, Kevin? Well, you know, a perfect example of this is, does the solution support SMS? Can you, as the end user, talk to somebody by text messaging back and forth without using their personal cell phone number? That's a recent modality that's come out. There's going to be new ones in the next couple of years, and you want a solution that's going to update and engage with that so that you've got the ability to talk with your customers. That keeps you involved with them, and that's one of the pieces you're going to get from this. That's part of that as-a-service value. You're getting more than just the product. You're getting a constantly evolving product. So thinking about all of these as-a-service value propositions is a critical piece of this because it will tell you what you're getting beyond just the phone service. It will deliver the value that you're paying for. It is why you're paying an ongoing monthly expense, not just to get the phone service. Because if you're just getting the phone service, let me tell you right now, a premise-based system is going to end up being more valuable for you. Your return on your investment is gonna be better any time horizon over like four to five years. So just go with that. If that's all you want, if it's about you know financing, okay, talk about a lease. Do it that way so it can become a monthly payment. When you're buying cloud, you're buying it to take all of these pieces here and provide them as part of the package. You need to get the as a service. And so make sure that you're getting it and make sure the value is there because you're paying for it. So let me finish up by talking about phones for a moment because there's a lot going on with phones out there in the marketplace. And there's a really, really worthwhile thing to understand about making sure you have a successful cloud transition. One of the real common things we see out there are phones are being given away or they're included with the deal. And these can all be good deals for you. But remember what you're getting here. The first thing is when somebody says they're giving you a phone for free, they aren't. Nobody gives anything away for free. They have baked that price into the price they're providing you. So you're paying for the phone somehow. It's in there, trust me. So you need to consider what's being left out. Are some of those as a service features we just looked at being left out to cover the phone cost? Is the customer not doing as much, to, I mean, is the vendor not doing as much development? Do they not have the same network operations resources? Do they not have a security team? What is being cut to pay for the fact that you're getting a quote unquote free phone? Great not to have to pay for all that hardware, but make sure you understand what's going on there as part of the deal. And hopefully the vendor you're talking with, if you ask them, they'll say, yeah, we're doing this, and here's the reason why we're doing it. Because one of the things to understand here is that IP phones, the technology has matured, just like your smartphone, your computer, your laptop has. You used to be that people bought a new phone almost every year. Nowadays, you keep your phone for three, four, or five years. And the same is true about the phone on your desk. This is mature technology. IP phones can last you for years and years. You can have them for a decade. So don't think about the fact that you need to turn over the phone all the time. It's something that can be bought as an investment. And that brings me to rental phones. Uh, the thing about rental phones, this once again, if you're really looking for an OPEX kind of scenario, can be great. It makes real sense on the balance sheet. Uh, if you don't have the money to invest up front or don't want to do a financing deal, uh, rental phones can be good. But you need to once again think long term. With a rental phone, you're gonna to continue to pay for them as long as you have the contract, and you're never gonna own those. You can't take them with you. If you change vendors, the vendor takes them back. And we've actually seen this with customers who are like, wait a second, you guys are quoting me the exact same phone I have on my desk. Oh great, you have this phone on your desk. Well, why don't we just use that? Oh no, I have to return this to my vendor. I don't get to keep it. So they have to go and either buy or rent the phone all over again. You're never getting any value out of it. Consider this when you're thinking long-term once again, if that makes a lot of sense. Being able to actually own the phones makes the, uh, you able to transition vendors more easily. You've eliminated the hardware as a cost. It's much easier to jump from vendor to vendor. That is if you choose an industry standard phone. This is a last thing that I would point out. Phones that can be used on multiple platforms, things like Polycom or Yowlink, are very, very valuable as you're figuring out what vendor to go with. Because if you have such a phone and you own it, like we just talked about, 
then it's really easy to, to move to a new service. When your contract comes up, or if you have a reason you break the contract, you can just keep the phones on your desk and move to the new service. There'll be some work to reprovision them on the new service, but it's much less than having to buy a new set of phones or start a new rental agreement and be paying for those phones for the entire life of the contract. The thing to really avoid here is there are phones out there that are proprietary, that only work on one vendor's stack, they only work on their solution, and that locks you in. Uh, in some cases, that can be where you see these free phones going out is because, hey, look, if I give you the phone, this phone only works with my product. You're going to be my customer for years because you don't want to replace the phone. So just understand what's going on here in the mentality. The deal may make sense. I'm not saying don't make these deals. There are lots of places where they make sense. But be aware what's going on. Understand it so that you can have the smoothest transition to cloud possible. And you don't get a rude surprise a couple of years down the line when you decide you do want to change and you discover, I've got to give the phones back. These phones won't work on another platform. Whatever the problem is, be aware and think through this so you're thinking long term. So that's really it. Hopefully this has been useful. Uh, a lot of content here. Like I said, you can email us at vmarketingatvertical.com if you want a copy of this presentation. Um, and uh, we can certainly uh, provide that to you. So we've got some time here. Uh, I don't see any questions as of yet. If anybody has any questions, feel free to type them into the dialog box and let us know what uh, you would like to know about. Happy to answer questions now. And if you don't think of it at the moment, if you haven't come up with what that question is, you can certainly email us later and say, hey, we'd like to know about this more. Or, you know, you said something about getting the right help. Can you help me get an independent consultant? Can you help me with a vendor? Uh, can you help me figure out what I need to do? We're happy to do all of that. That's what our business is. Wow, I must have done the world's best job because nobody has any questions. That's amazing. All right, I'm going to finish up and go ahead and stop the recording. I really appreciate everyone's time. And if you do think of anything, vmarketing at vertical.com, you can come and get back with us.